My trip to the U.S. Virgin Islands was amazing. It was just two and a half hours from Miami, which gave me just enough time to start on my book and catch a quick nap. That was a good thing, because between St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas, there were tons of things to do. Island hopping from one to the next was part of the fun. It's just a quick 20-minute flight from St. Croix to St. Thomas, and just 15 minutes on the ferry from St. Thomas to St. John. Each island has its own unique vibe. You kind of have to see them all. Getting around the islands was easy, too, and gorgeous. I love the open-air taxis. It's too beautiful outside to be closed in a minute longer than you have to be. And you can always rent a car or a scooter. Just remember to drive on the left side of the road. <laughs> I saw so many beautiful sights, I can't even begin to tell you about them all. Scenic trails, idyllic cottages, eco-tours. I even saw a couple getting married on the beach. So romantic. Honeymoons would be perfect there. Let's face it, you go to the Caribbean for beautiful beaches, and the U.S. Virgin Islands didn't let me down. There are 44 beaches on St. Thomas alone, 24 on St. Croix, and at least 19 on St. John. Megan's Bay on St. Thomas and Trunk Bay on St. John are in Condé Nast's top 10 beaches in the world. And just between you and me, Cheney Bay on St. Croix is one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. You should definitely check that one out. The culture was so rich there. I just felt it in everything. The people, the architecture, the music, food, the festivals, the history. Over the years, these islands have belonged to Holland, England, Denmark, Spain, France, Malta, and now the United States. It's this great tapestry of history and beauty that just takes over all your senses. Since these amazing islands are part of America, I didn't even need a passport to visit. U.S. citizens never do. English is the official language, and the U.S. dollar is the accepted currency. All in all, I felt right at home in paradise. I couldn't help but be fascinated by the stories that shape the island's culture. It's so breathtakingly beautiful. It's easy to see why so many explorers, pirates, kings and queens have been drawn there over the centuries. If you are into history, there are definitely some sites worth checking out, like Salt River Bay on St. Croix. It's where Christopher Columbus landed in 1493. Other great historical figures spent time there too, including Alexander Hamilton, who spent so much of his childhood on St. Croix, they say he considered himself a Prussian. That's what the locals call someone born on St. Croix. Another place I loved was Drake's Seat. It overlooks Megan's Bay, which is gorgeous. It's where Sir Francis Drake sat guard against pirates and foreign armies. You can sit right where he did, but there's nothing to guard against anymore. It's all about the view. I was surprised to see all the sugar mill ruins around. Sometimes you'll see the remains of a whole sugar plantation, but mostly you'll see a lone sugar mill at the top of a beautiful hill or come across one on a trail. They're beautiful reminders that these islands were once a major source of sugar to the world. You history buffs will find loads to explore. Old slave quarters, museums, even a real rum factory. Cruzan Rum has been making rum on St. Croix for almost 250 years. And let me tell you, it's good stuff. I loved the music. Quelbe, calypso, reggae, soca, zouk, steel pan. You hear it everywhere, especially during the festivals. I was there just in time for the VI Carnival on St. Thomas in April. But you could catch the St. John Festival on July 4th or the Crucian Christmas Festival in December on St. Croix. I loved the Moko Jumbies. They're these giant, colorful dancers on stilts. The locals told me they chase away bad spirits and bring good luck. The food on the islands is some of the best I've had anywhere. The seafood is unbelievable. I think my lobster dinner came ashore just minutes after I did. Definitely try the Callaloo and the soursop ice cream. I always believe you can't really experience a place until you try the local food. Whatever you have, 
It's best with a refreshing rum punch to wash it all down. Okay, bottom line, scuba diving in the U.S. Virgin Islands is awesome. For beginners, experienced divers, everybody. There are reefs, underwater trails, amazing marine life, and tons of licensed scuba companies. If you're a dive fanatic like me, you don't want to miss any of it. Oh, and don't forget your underwater camera. Look at this incredible shot. On St. Croix, I filled my logbook with wall, wreck, and reef dives. Then on St. John, which is known for its low impact diving, I saw turtles, trumpet fish, and gold spotted eels. Then on St. Thomas, I dove a shipwreck. They have 14 of them. The diversity of a dive here is unbelievable. And I have to admit, knowing I was diving in the safety of U.S. waters was a bonus, too. I'm all about a good beach day, but after a while, I'm ready to try something new, which worked out well because with an average temperature of 82 degrees, the possibilities were endless. There was deep sea fishing, day sails, sunset cruises, mountain biking, tennis, and four beautiful golf courses. Come visit my island, the United States Virgin Islands. Okay, you may not know this, but Tim Duncan, the professional basketball player, is from St. Croix. So if you're lucky, you could run into him on the beach. And if you're really lucky, you could even get his autograph. I did. <laughs> they also have an Ironman triathlon here every year. I heard it's pretty cool, too. I went horseback riding on St. Croix, kayaking on St. John, and then spent the day at Coral World on St. Thomas. What a trip! You definitely don't want to miss Coral World, especially if you have kids. It's a totally interactive experience, so you can swim with the sea lions and even feed the sharks. And you can go underwater sea trekking. It looks bizarre, but it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, as you can probably tell, one of my favorite things to do was absolutely nothing. No, make that absolutely nothing with the frosty rum punch in my hand. The most inspiring part of my trip was the natural beauty of the islands, especially on St. John, where two thirds of the island is a national park. But there are tons of ways to connect with the environment on all three islands. On St. John, there's a wildlife sanctuary and 22 hiking trails. On St. Croix, there's an ecological preserve, a rainforest, and a living desert. And on St. Thomas, there's a marine sanctuary and mangrove lagoon. I even saw baby sea turtles on Buck Island. Oh, that's a little island, just a boat ride away from St. Croix. Okay, let's be honest. No trip is complete without shopping, right? And this is the perfect place to do it. First of all, the U.S. Virgin Islands have the best duty-free shopping allowance in the Caribbean, $1,600 tax-free. And you'll find tons of quaint boutiques, local artisans, outdoor markets, and really original island art, some beautifully carved in mahogany. Plus perfume, liquor, spices, you name it. Oh, and best of all, some really unbelievable deals on jewelry. I had to pick up an extra suitcase just to get it all home. It's so beautiful. I could definitely see getting married there one day. I actually did see a wedding there on my trip and I met plenty of people who were on their honeymoon. My friends, Jackie and Greg, said all they did was mail in their wedding application to arrive eight days ahead, and next thing you know, they were toes in the sand saying their vows on the beach. You've gotta love that. Even though I wasn't on my honeymoon, the romance is built right into these islands, and right into the gorgeous hotels and resorts, too. By the way, my hotel had a spa. I hear a lot of them do. I definitely recommend a massage while you're there, even if you're not on your honeymoon. I stayed in a bunch of different places. I started in a villa on St. Croix, then a bed and breakfast on St. Thomas, then I finished the trip off at a luxury resort on St. John. Hey, a girl's gotta splurge once in a while. I met people who stayed at the campgrounds and deluxe tents, and others who spent their entire trip in a full-service hotel. There are definitely all kinds of accommodations on all three islands, no matter what your budget. I was here on the vacation of a lifetime, but I actually met a bunch of people who were lucky enough to be here on business. 
And from what they've told me, even an all-day meeting here can feel very vacation-like. They got to enjoy all the same beaches, shops, restaurants, and sports that I did, only they got paid to do it. They say the meeting facilities here are first class, and I believe it. Once I got on island time, I wanted to stay there. Unfortunately, even the best trips have to come to an end. I had a great time in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I hope you find your island time, too.